Hi, Year 10. How are you doing? Uh, for this lesson, as always, we're going to need a pen and paper. We're going to be taking notes from the lesson. Um, and remember, we're always going to be saving these notes so that they can be stuck into your booklets, um, sorry, into your books uh, on our arrival at school. So make sure that they're nice and safe because they are really helpful and going towards um, uh, your revision for your exams and revision and retaining that information for this wonderful subject we know as food and nutrition. For your starter quiz, I would like you to look at each of these foods um, and imagine 100 grams of that particular food. I'll give you um, a few examples in the next slide of what 100 grams looks like um, if you're unsure, but also imagining um, those videos that you can get on YouTube where um, they're satisfying videos and one of them is like a compressor and what the and if, if you if anyone's seen these videos if you can get like these satisfying videos of a compressor compressing and literally just destroying um, uh, either foods or um, toys or whatever imagine that with the with these foods and how much oil or fat would come out of these foods and that's essentially what we're looking at so how much fat in grams do you think is coming out of these foods if it were to be compressed um, or to be magically taken out so here's an example of foods um, in grams to give you a better idea of those portion sizes where we're asking for a um, hundred grams to imagine 100 grams of these particular foods here's 100 grams of salmon so 100 grams of salmon is about the size of um, your palm right there same with uh, steak and um, they're both about the same thickness to be fair about the thickness of a deck of cards both 100 grams 80 grams of berries 80 grams of broccoli uh, and this just for fun because this piece of chocolate is about 20 grams and they class uh, 20 grams of chocolate is about your uh, daily treat for the day. So those in lockdown, um, can you imagine living off 20 grams of chocolate a day and then calling it literally a day? Um, I would disagree with that. Uh, but at least that gives you an idea of um, how many grams or what, what 100 grams or also looks like. Coming back to this, uh, pausing the um, PowerPoint as you go and it and you can start finding out all the different um, amounts of fat in grams that are within 100 grams of each of these foods. Um, so pause as you go um, and guess um, the amount of grams. Uh, good luck. Today's learning objectives, we are looking um, to know about the different types of fats. We're going to look at different types of fats and recap um, on what we've done in previous years, to be fair. Um, and we're going to be able to distinguish the difference between saturated and unsaturated fats, which we, we try and talk about every now and again, uh, but to just kind of hammer that home, to, so to speak. Um, and we're going to understand the reactions that take place when fats are used and cooked and why it's important in cooking, why these reactions happen um, and why and, wh and what the, um, the outcomes essentially are and how those outcomes um, are made um, in terms of how we use these different fats to our advantage. The clip here um, is available um, on Show My Homework, so um, you can pause the video now or stop the video, go into Show My Homework, copy and paste the link below and um, watch the video about what is fat. So after watching the video, I can imagine some of you are standing back going, what was that all about? Um, in some cases, uh, or in most cases, sorry, fat is a very complex subject in food um, as well as what we should uh, know about now with uh, carbohydrates and uh, proteins and and, except, and so on um, so again hammering it home that fat is a macronutrient uh, and for those that remember uh, fat is joining those macronutrients along with 
you guessed it, protein and carbs, fantastic. Um, and it's needed by all animals and humans. And it's the main source of energy um, is macronutrients. Um, so here I jumped ahead a little bit. So the two macronutrients being proteins and carbs. So fat, protein, carbs are your three macronutrients and they all provide energy. The basic chemical structure of fats is this, it's a triglyceride. So when you when we were looking at protein molecules before, before they're made up of amino acids. Carbohydrates come from the form uh, through the form of photosynthesis. Fat molecules are made up of um, it's a little bit more complex into, from the other two in that it's made of a, a glycerol and three fatty acids. And this makes up a triglyceride. I guess you can kind of uh, break it down being tri being three and the glycerides being the glycerol being that one element right there. So triglycerides, three fatty acids and one glycerol. And these triglycerides are stored as fat, depending on what fats you're eating um, within your body. So they're, they're also the store of energy that um, we use. You could also probably link it to, um, depending on what foods you're eating, uh, your fat soluble vitamins. So A, D, E and K. But this is your uh, basic triglycerides um, being your basic fat molecule. Going on uh, from talking about triglycerides, uh, the link here is within Show My Homework, um, just to give you a visual and a better idea of how triglycerides work for us in the body. And moving on with fatty acids, so those three fatty acids that are linked with that glycerol. So these fatty acids, the building blocks of the fat in our bodies and, and the food that we eat. Um, so these fats are broken down um, during digestion. Everything happens when, it's, when we talk about absorbing these nutrients and breaking down nutrients and breaking down these foods. It's all within our gut. It's all going on in the digestion. And this is what's happening on these fatty acids um, so that it can be absorbed into the blood. And once they're absorbed into the blood, these fatty acids, that's where it's being stored, essentially. Um, so you could link that with if you're having too many bad fats um, with um, high cholesterol and so on. And that's where it's a build up within the arteries and so on. Um, but moving on, but, but fatty acids have many important functions in the body. Um, they're not all bad. Like we've, we've seen the video, not all fats are bad because we need them also um, for energy. So we need them. So, so sorry for the energy storage, um, especially for our um, fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E and K. So when we talk about the functions of fat in the body, so the function of something is what it's what is it doing? How is it working? What's it doing for us? So this functions of fat in the body. Number one, uh, we should um, already kind of know is it, it's the energy. It's, it's, it's a store of energy. They provide us with energy and it's stored underneath the skin. Um, it helps to insulate our bodies, keep us warm especially in these cold times, but protects bones and kidneys, so kidneys around the back uh, from damage and acting like a cushion. So you imagine like your body is, um, it's, it's absorbing um, all of these shocks and knocks that we get every now and again um, and acting like a cushion so we're not getting bruised too easily. And it's also um, giving uh, fat soluble vitamins so storing that uh, not just the energy but in the skin um, that these fat soluble vitamins A, D, E and K. There are different types of fats and all these fats come under one word essentially called lipids and you can find this word lipids and in different um, sources as well if you look on the backs of um, ready meals or uh, backs of other foods in terms of their ingredients there is some if it says lipids it's a type of fat so don't let it confuse you lipids is it comes under the um, basic term of fats and oils and fats come from three different sources um, that we eat so one is animals one is fish and the other being vegetables. These different types of fat come from uh, these three different sources, one being animal fats. So butter uh, from uh, milk, 
uh, lard, from pig's fat, cheese, cream, milk, all these products come from animals, so animal fats. Uh, fish, so good oily fish containing a good amount of omega-3s and those cod liver oil tablets and so on, good for brain function, good for joints and so on, um, good for, to keep those joints, um, I see, oiled and moving. Um, and your vegetable fats are olive oil, sunflower oil, vegetable oil and coconut oil. What I would like you to do here is pause the video. Um, you can use your phones if you're not using them already or laptops, whatever you, whatever you use to research. I would like you to find and write down um, for me, along with your notes, uh, which foods are saturated and unsaturated. What foods can you find? And we have talked about them already, but we're now separating the two. So we're defining the two what foods are saturated and what foods are unsaturated. So if you know already, list them within saturated and unsaturated, but then take it further. Maybe you might find more that surprise you. Um, and also go further and research what hydro hydrogenated fats are. It's an interesting um, concept in, in terms of how fats, uh, one ty type of fat is manipulated to make a particular other fat, and I think it will surprise you. So looking at what unsaturated fats are, um, saturated fats, which are better for you, and then um, looking onto what hydrog hydrogenated fats are. This is a slide um, just to help you really look at the different functions of fats in uh, and oils in foods and what they do. You can see that there is so many um, different ways in which fats and oils really do um, add um, a lot of um, things to food. So forming, um, as you can see, emulsions, color, textures, um, flavors, extending shelf lives um, of foods, aerating it, keeping it moist, um, giving that nice crumbly short textures. All these things we take for granted, but have come a long way in the way that we are able to manipulate and use fats and oils within foods. There are four reactions fats have with foods. Um, to um, get those flavors, textures, um, colors, and so on um, from the previous slide. And these four roles that they play um, need to be understood really within food. They play a big part within food and nutrition and the understanding of them really helps towards cooking um, and um, preparing foods in such a way that um, it, it goes towards your advantage and to the person eating it as well, to be fair. Um, and these four specific roles are known as plasticity, shortening, aeration and emulsification. So see how fats, we've just been talking about the chemical reactions of fats. And now we're going into the four different areas of these chemical reactions or these reactions um, not necessarily chemical, that, that fats have with foods. Um, you may have already used, in fact, um, you will have used most of these um, reactions within uh, foods that you've made, whether they be at home or within lessons. Um, when we've made cakes, sauces, pastries, biscuits, and a plethora of other things um, to do with fats and foods. To sum up then, this is what I would like um, you to be doing for the, um, the remainder of the lesson. So we're going to be, or sorry, you're going to be going away and again researching um, these areas. So there's also a PDF um, attachment that is from the book that we use, the online digital book. I've copied and pasted all the relevant pieces on there. So use that for you to your advantage as well. Use YouTube, use all these wonderful resources that we have in order to um, look into these areas um, that I'm about to, these questions that I'm about to put up. This goes really well towards your year 11 GCSE as well. So don't, please, please use it to your advantage is what I'm trying to get across here. So number one, these are the questions that I would like you to answer for the rest of the um, lesson. So explaining why each of the following are good practice. So number one, A, when using butter to make cake, make sure the butter is at room temperature. Why is it good practice to have this butter at room temperature? Uh, you can see there, there's two marks, so two points to be made. 
Why does it need to be soft? And what does it add to uh, cakes? Uh, B, when using fat to make short crust pastry that the fat is chilled. Why are we chilling? Why is it good um, practice to have the fat cold when making short crust pastry? What's, what does that add? What's it doing? That PDF um, gives a really good um, lead in into what and why. Um, it's good practice. Again, watch YouTube videos as well. They're very helpful. Um, and then part two, using your knowledge and understanding of the functional and chemical properties of fats, explain the following. So why vegetable uh, fat spread sold in tubs and cartons can easily be spread when they are chilled? This goes back significantly to one of the questions that was within the, the um, so it's going back to hydrogenation, um, a little tip there. So why vegetable fats spreads sold in tubs, cartons can be easily spread when they are chilled. Four marks, so four points there to be raising. And this goes really well again to practice for these long questions that come up at which hide these marks and where you can attain them. Why mayonnaise does not separate when it's stored? So there are, there's look into how mayonnaise is is made, and why how does that not separate? What's happening there? Again, four marks to be made. And the last one, why the ability of fat to aerate a mixture is really important in cake making. So looking up aeration, what's that, and why is it important for fat to be aerated, and why is that important in cake making? What does it add? Again, four marks. So quite a lot to be getting on there with. Full sentences, guys. Let's really work towards um, trying to um, answer these longer questions in such a way that really get you those marks. Any problems you get, obviously come back to me. Let me know that you're having, um, if you're having an issue or you need help in some way. Okay, I'm always there if you should need a helping hand. Okay, so those um, questions by the end of the lesson, um, and that would be fantastic. All right, and also to, to add. Um, we're going to have a live lesson um, on the Friday, so where you would have your usual lesson on the Friday. I'm not just going to put this up, uh, but we're going to have a live lesson and I'll try and figure out something um, that we can do to help that lesson go a lot more smoother. All right. Take care now, guys. See you later.